Hey everyone, this is Tony Features Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 practical ways to secure your Ubuntu server from hackers and bad actors. Now, the tips in this video are not comprehensive because as you know, anything that's connected to the internet is never 100% truly secure, but these tips are fundamental best practices for securing your server. We'll talk about everything from passwords and firewalls to security updates and locking down SSH. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get on into it. Before we begin here, I just want to remind you that the latest information will be on my blog, which I have linked down below. So check that out. And with that said, the first tip here is to make sure you keep everything up to date. Updates and more importantly, security updates are released all the time for the packages that you have installed on your system. And because of this, it's really hard to stay up to date. So my recommendation is to automatically install security updates. You can do this with the unattended upgrades package, which gives you complete control over which updates you want to automatically install. At the very least, I recommend installing security updates and if this is a production server, you can exclude certain packages, specify if a reboot should happen, and if so, what time of day would be acceptable. I have a full tutorial on unattended upgrades, which I'll have as part of a playlist at the end of this video. Next up, let's talk about the root user and users with sudo access. As you know, the root user is a very powerful user, and it's for that reason that we want to limit the need to even use this user. Instead, it's a better idea to temporarily elevate your privileges with the sudo command. You can give a user sudo privileges with the user mod command like this. Now, don't go crazy and give all of your users sudo access. Instead, limit the number of users with sudo access to maybe just one at most. You can get a list of users in the sudo group with this command, so check this out just to be sure. The third tip is to enforce password complexity. First, you'll want to check to see if any of your current users have empty passwords. You can do this by looking at the slash etc slash shadow file. After confirming that none of your users are passwordless, install the pluggable authentication module password quality package and configure the password complexity requirements. I suggest adding at least a minimum length requirement of 16 characters. With that in place, any newly created users as well as password changes will have to abide by that complexity. Speaking of passwords, we don't want to use a password to log into the server via SSH. Instead of a password, we want to use a key to access the remote server. To set this up, use the SSH keygen command to generate a key on your local system like this. Next, copy that key to the server with the SSH copy ID command like so. Test it out and you will now be able to log into your remote server without a password. With that in place, next, let's disable password-based authentication for SSH altogether. Open the SSH config file at slash etc slash SSH slash SSH D underscore config, uncomment the password authentication line and change the value to no. While you are in here, also uncomment the permit empty passwords line and change this value to no, and also set use PAM to no as well. Restart the SSH daemon with systemctl restart sshd, and now when somebody tries to access your server via SSH without a valid public key, they'll see a permission denied error. While we're talking about SSH, let's also disallow the root user to log in via SSH. Similar to before, open the sshd config file and change permit root login to no. Restart the ssh daemon with systemctl restart sshd for the changes to take effect, and now the root user will not be able to log into the server via ssh. Another ssh security technique is to change the ssh port. The default ssh port is 22 and every hacker knows this. Open the ssh config file again, uncomment the port line and change it from 22 to a random number. I suggest looking through this Wikipedia page of port numbers to find one that's not used by another application. As always, restart the ssh daemon, and now when somebody tries to log into your server with the default port, they'll get a connection refused error. Now in the future, you can specify your port with the dash p flag and access your server that way. The next tip here is to disable IPv6 system-wide. This falls into the category of if you're not using it, then turn it off, and as a result, this reduces the attack surface of your system. To turn off IPv6, edit the slash etc slash sysctl config file and add these lines to the end. 
apply the changes with sysctl-p and verify that IPv6 has been turned off with this command. As an extra layer of security, you can also turn off IPv6 connections for SSH. In your SSH config file, change the address family option to inet and restart the SSHD server. Next up, I recommend you use a firewall with brute force protection. A firewall allows you to restrict incoming and outgoing traffic based on a set of rules and combine this with intrusion prevention software like fail to ban and you can automatically block an IP address after a certain number of failed login attempts. I have an entire video on fail to ban which will be part of the playlist at the end of this video. By default, fail to ban automatically creates these firewall rules in the IP tables firewall, but you can also configure fail to ban to use the UFW firewall or the uncomplicated firewall instead. Assuming that you're running a web server, it's a great idea to add an extra layer of security on top of your admin pages with basic authentication. While some web applications have their own methods for authentication, it's never a bad idea to also leverage the server itself to further restrict access. Using basic authentication, the browser will prompt the user for a username and a password when they navigate to an area of your website that you have locked down. Without the proper credentials, the user will be prevented from loading the page. Again, I have videos for setting up basic authentication on Apache, Nginx, and Open Lightspeed web servers, which will be in the playlist as well. Number 10 here is to remove unnecessary packages. There's no need to be running an FTP server alongside of your web server if you're not even using FTP to begin with. The same goes for a whole bunch of other protocols which just open up holes in your system. Assuming that you are not using any of these services, execute this command to remove unnecessary packages that could otherwise give hackers another door into your system. As a reminder, check out the blog post that I have linked down below for all the latest security tips from me. Like this video if you found it valuable, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this from me in the future, and if you do, I'll see you in the next one.